down the hammer and pick up the pencil. You're about to listen to the Savvy Radio Show. Learn from real life real estate investors. Experience revealed hey, with hey, the you Savvy Landlord the Savvy Radio as show. your host. What's going down, party people? This is your friend, Steve Van Kallenberg. Yes, I am your friend, and you haven't even met me. Well, let's not make that a regular occurrence. Reach out. Get out of your comfort zone and reach out to me. Say hi. Facebook me. Text me. You can go to the SavvyInvestors.com website, SavvyPodcast.com. You know, I, I just don't think we as a society is really reaching out. Really, really telling people, hey, I'm here. I may me, I may not be the best, but I'm here and I'm willing to learn and I'm willing to grow. Is that, If that's you, just say hi. I mean, it, and our exchange may be just a few hellos or comment, uh, you know, pleasantries, whatever. But if we don't take the opportunity or the to move forward, how do you expect to grow? And man, I'm telling you right now, I'm in this deep, weird life change i don't know how, i don't, honest to god i really don't even understand how to explain it to you what's going on i'm I, I keep starting to write a podcast about it and then i just get straight focused i'm i'm really dialing in on who i am maybe it's midlife crisis you know i'm about to click 50 this month i'm clicking 49 i'm i'm actually excited you know a lot of people don't like telling their age or don't like life pass you know i'm telling you i'm trying to live as as fullest as I can in every moment. And I recommend the same for you within that process. I mean, I've seen a lot of things that was, is very interesting. And one of those things I just want to break, break off and I can probably go on and on, but this has been on my heart. Is this like being self-aware? Like you, the, the reason why I want you to reach out to somebody, cause somebody needs to say to something to somebody that you're unaware of something you're unaware like you know you got egg on your face you got a booger on your nose you know on your beard and you know you're unaware right i think that's what's going on in society is that we're unaware of what is out there and i'm i'm trying to just articulate this as best i can but here, let me just break this off for you real simple i uh and, and you know i guess this and, I, and there's a lot of guys that i've ch- chatted about this and you know they can't afford it or they don't want to do it. But what I'm, trying, what I'm about to say is I went and got fitted on my bike. And this is a big, long, just it could, I could do a whole podcast, a whole life a class on the process from the very first bike I bought, which I think is psycho. And I, I, I mean, <laughs> I have I have these this mental note of buying a bike and where I'm at today. And a lot of it had to do with I didn't have money at the time, and maybe I have some resources now that I didn't think I'd have now. But the process, the journey has been just weird. Um, And I wouldn't say negative. I wouldn't say positive. I would say frustrated to get fitted properly for a bike. And, you know, I randomly started off with a random used bike, and then I I thought I loved that bike, and I did, and to this day I do. And then I upgraded to this other bike which is the same brand same bike changed geometry because this is what bike people do uh manufacturers and then i hated that bike sold that bike then found a random bike used again and liked that bike then bought another i mean and i'm, I'm like is this just the process of li-? no and i'm not saying this is right or wrong this is and i think i, I <laughs> the life of hard knocks is is not smart and what I realized, what what I was trying to say, some of my friends don't want to do this, but my wife is a triathlon, athlete, whatever you want to call it, and she went to a bike store to get fitted. And it was only $100. Now, only 100 but it, she was trying to tell me it was like life change for her. And, I'm, I mean, again, she's not into biking like I am, and uh, she's a swimmer, and she's a runner, and then she wants to compete on the bike. And I'm like, okay, yeah, whatever. And, you know, She's like, Steven, you got to do it. And I mean, I understand for her, she's a try, try bike. You got to lean over. There's a lot of variables involved, but I was like, I'm going to go do it. And I'm like, which bike should I do? Well, she's like, you're going on this trip. You should do the mountain bike. And I'm like, okay. And I go to this, I got to fill out this form and I pay, I, I go to this, pay the hundred bucks. And seriously, I just had this amazing epiphany and it's weird. Like everything that I have read so far recently in this last week or two every eric thomas video or gary v video 
is is about this premise of being ignorant and about not knowing and about getting a coach. And of course, I mean, it's just obvious to me because I love coaching people because I love to see them succeed or the light bulb moment comes on or I had an, a, a contribution in their life that maybe made them a millionaire or maybe they bought 10 more units or whatever the case may be. I mean, maybe that's a selfish harvest. But I, I went to this process and I texted a few guys and one dude was like, boom, I need to do it. And the other guy I text, he was like kind of him and a ha about it. And I'm like, oh, maybe he just can't afford it. And and then I talked about it some more. And that the interesting thing is, let me tell you, when I, you know, the guy, when I got to this bike thing, this this bike fitting, the guy's like, hey, you need to raise your seat up. And I'm like, whoa, 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 homeboy. No, I, you know, I'm a jockey r- rider. I like to ride low just so I can take the turns better and feel like I have a lower sense of gravity. I feel like I have more control over the bike up high. I feel like I'm going to topple over. And it was interesting. You know, he just kind of blew me off. Like he was just, this this bike dude was, I wouldn't say he was arrogant, but I mean, obviously he was an expert at fitting people and I'm some ignorant dude telling him what I should do. Cause you know, I'm, I'm savvy. I know what I'm talking about, right? No, I don't, mother. You're ignorant. No, you're ignorant. I was like, so I just had to drop the pride, which I'm learning that too. A lot of arrogance in this, this big body of mine. And I was just like, okay, I'm just going to listen. My wife, I'm just going to listen to this dude. And sure enough, I'm telling you, man, he raised it up. I, it looked, he said a centimeter. I, it looked like an inch to me. I was like, it's high. At least a half inch. I ain't going to lie. And then he adjusted my seat. And I can just feel the pressure off my knee. And I was like, man, how many people are going through life and have a a, a horrible experience on a bicycle? No, I'm not saying, you know, $100 is a lot of money. All right. That that, that's 20 percent for somebody's salary per week, let's say. But the 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 life changes expect <clears throat> and I'm like, now this 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 bike store I went to is like straight bougie. I mean, these bikes are just expensive, like a t-shirt, sweatshirt's like $50, $60. I'm like, this is I ain't buying that. You know, it's too high for just a generic t-shirt with your name on it. But it was just interesting how that affected me and when I texted some homeboy, he just he was all amped up at first and then he said no. And I was like, you're going to let money hold you back that you could have, you could change your life. And after you get this bike thing done, you have this PDF of all your measurements and you never have to get fitted again on whatever vehicle, whatever bicycle you're riding. And it was just interesting. Another thing about my wife, you know, women have different pelvis bones obviously they kick out children right (laughs) so she was riding her tri bike which we got this super duper off the chain speed concept track carbon fiber blah 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 bike used that we didn't even know what we bought someone to tell me that that is an expensive bike i didn't know i thought two thousand dollars was expensive but she had the wrong seat and when she changed that seat and when i found out how much that seat cost i was like what but it changed her life. And I'm just saying, it changed her life. I mean, she not only that she's extremely motivated, but she's not in pain. She said sometimes something would go numb. And I can't remember what she said, either her leg or foot or something. And I mean, all from an adjustment. Listen, that's where you need to be right now. You need an adjustment. You need to reach out to somebody somewhere and get some sort of personal coaching of aspect and i'm not just saying this to ramp up my deal because i really i don't have no time for myself let alone trying to act like i can run a coaching business but i can tell you i know for a fact even (laughs) and i I mean these are the books that i'm reading right now name one golfer that does not have a professional coach that i'm gonna try to work on this myself i'm gonna try to no stop being thrifty And I would beg to differ cheap. Listen, if you hold on to this $100, okay, if you hold on to it, you can't replenish it. Money is infinite. It's everywhere. If you, you will actually just dumbfound yourself if you 
spent the money, changed your life, and it would come back to you. You would come with another another scenario, okay? I, I, I don't know who needs to hear that. I don't even know why that even that conversation even started. I'm trying to be committed, trying to do a podcast once a week right now. That's my mini litty goal. And I started off with that mess. So <clears throat> I don't know why I did that. I have a hundred of those little nuances, life changes that are just, 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 just gnawing at me. Just, you know, figuring out what my purpose is, what my goal is, going back to defining moments. But that's for another podcast. Anyway, hey, man, we're going to knock this out real fast, down and dirty. I think a lot of people struggle with setting goals. And I'm telling you, you're going to hear this a thousand times from a thousand different people, but you got to hear it. You got to listen to it. You got to apply. You got to pull over and take out a pen and paper and actually start writing goals down. You have goals in your mind, but they're not real until you get them on paper, until you start setting a time each week. And I would beg to differ each day to truly work on your goals. And I'm going to tell you right now, I'm a a super uh, hypocrite right there because I try to do that. I try to set the time and things go past. I, but I could tell you right now, uh, you know, as your witness, as a testimony, when I stay focused on my goals, success abounds beyond my comprehension. Success abounds beyond my comprehension. And it's as simple as sometimes I just have to review those goals and they kind of drag me down. And in essence, like, ah, oh, man, I forgot to do that. Ah, oh, I got to do this. But when you start, stay the course you will reach those goals and if you don't have any goals written down you got wishes and they're never going to come to to fruition so you might as well start working so we're going to knock out this little quick art of goal setting and i think you just need a reminder of it we're just going to cut it down to dirty maybe 10 minutes because i already talked too much but listen Reach out to somebody. Someone needs to be aware, aware of the bike, aware of you're you're in pain, aware that you you don't the blinders are on. You might need some guidance and it doesn't have to be an official coach. There's somebody in your network that has a dream to be a coach and they need to practice on you. I don't know who that is. If you don't know, reach out to me. I'll find someone to coach you. Let's just make this happen. Let's live this best life. All right, first of all, you got on these goal setting, you got to have a short term, intermediate, and a long range. All right, long range, like, man, I'm working on a nine year goal right now. And the reason why I'm working on a nine year goal that's in 2032 is it's kind of interesting. It's fun. It's, it's, it's like, man, where am I going to be? How much money am I going to make? Or how much net worth am I going to have? And what kind of free time? I can tell you right now, I'm grinding it out really hard. And that's why I'm stupid busy, stupid tired barely getting stuff in is because I'm grinding on these businesses. And I realize I, I don't know how much longer I could do this, but I know in nine years from now, I ain't going to be doing it because either the, the, I'll have an exit plan or someone's going to replace me. And, you know, as a true entrepreneur, and I think that's the number one thing that you needed to find who, what's your makeup. I, I realize, and I wrote this down and it's in my notes um, at the office, but I, I only want to work with entrepreneurs. Like I like real estate. Don't get me wrong. But like, I really want that entrepreneur. I want to work with other business owners. I want to work with business owners that want to grow their business or partner or need lending or any of those type of things. I mean, I'm getting, trying to get dialed in exactly what I'm good at, exactly who I want to work with. And I think through the process of setting goals, those, those will be revealed over time. So short term, intermediate and long term. All right. So those are the three main goals that we're going to bust out. Goal setting improves your self image. And I'm reading this incredible book right now. I just I'm reading two and everything boils down to self image. Your whole life exists around self image. I think my wife thinks I'm on crack because I'm like, Shanae, the this self image, this this book, I'm, I mean, everything, every every relationship you're in is a self image situation. Your your school, your work. I mean, if you have a low self esteem, I I think you're missing out. And and, and I, I there's no courses. They don't teach you what is self esteem. And so I, I've been lately, that's where I've been just, just pondering, thinking. And now I understand how Jim Rohn just operated. But self-esteem is the killer, right? I'm telling you, it's the motivator. When you, when you are ecstatic about success and you have some success, your self-esteem just boosts. How do you manage and articulate and cultivate 
your self-image. I think that's the journey I'm on right now. If you got that going on, holla at your boy. That's going to be coming on a podcast. But it improves you today. I mean, I know I could be on the Mick and Meyer. I can be tired. I can be depressed. And I found out, I listened to, I listened to uh, Bob Proctor today, and, you know, depression is suppression of feelings. You're just bottling them up. And it, you're just you're squeezing it down. Depression. I'm like, ah, I get it. When you set goals, it releases things. It releases your creativity. It releases a possibility. It gives you hope and faith, which ultimately is over fear. I was like, ah. See, that's where I'm at right now, ladies and gents. I am in this weird fundamental belief system fixing and man i can't wait to share it to you i know i'm, I'm juicing this up i don't know if i'll ever do that podcast i probably will i have so much to share but let's let's get on here van calberg all right and it makes you feel better for tomorrow so right now if you're if you're bummed at all you can text me too like 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 i'm bummed right now i've been bummed with my knee injury that has taken three weeks and i don't i don't like to talk about not that i have a problem but I just, it's just wasted energy and wasted time. Yeah, man, I don't feel good. Or, man, my knee hurt. I still can't. And it, 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 it's been a sobering thing. Like, even I told my son last night, I'm like, dude, I could tell you right now, as soon as I get healed, I'm going to run every day. I'm not going to miss any opportunity in the future because this last three weeks has been a living hell for me. And it is, it's been weird. I, I, I didn't know that I was somewhat of a fake athlete <laughs> in my mind, like, I didn't know, and I realized, and as, as I'm reading these deep, deep books that you need to release, right? Back to this depression, you're suppressed, it's crushed, but I noticed that athleticism, bicycling, running, fitness of sorts, weightlifting, it releases you. So maybe you needed to hear that today. You're in some depression. How do you release it? Maybe go on a bike ride. I mean, I'm telling you, if you're in Oklahoma City, we need to ride. I got a road bike, mountain bike, whatever. We can hop, skitch, and jump if you need to. Get that endorphins going and get that suppression, get that, that negative energy out of you so you can move forward. And that could be just if you're an intellectual cat, maybe you're just doing these Goal setting session will work for you. Goal setting, like as I w set you up in the beginning, makes you aware of your strengths. So you can strengthen, so you can overcome obstacles. There's a homeboy that called me a couple months ago crying about he made some bad decisions. He got burned by a partner and he got too excited too fast. And lost a whole, sorry, I'm hiccuping, but, you know, this is the ghetto show. And, and lost a bunch of money. And I'm like, dude, listen, <laughs> this is a good thing. You still have life. You still have all your 50 other assets or whatever. And, you know, you're going to lose money, but it's only going to strengthen you. It's going to prepare you for bigger and better things. Or in this case, overcome obstacles. Stop crying. And st I'm telling you, I'm, I got back into Gary V. You know what's off the chain is when your wife sends you a Gary V video and then I send it on to my homeboy and he gets ecstatic. I'm telling you, it's just it's his power. It's strength. And he just talks about overcoming just opposition. Eric Thomas. I mean, David Coggins. I mean, these do. I mean, it's just get that inside of you. You got to set goals to be aware of your strengths and so you can provide solutions for your problems over time but you got to sit down I, I need somebody to holler at me and say hey man i, I listen to this podcast van Kalenberg. yep and you're okay i don't need no stroking but i want to know if this if you're really struggling where i'm at did, did you did you really genuinely like okay finally i'm gonna i'm going to set goals. I, I, in my mind, I have goals. Maybe they're fakely written down on my phone, but are you really striving? Do you really have a plan for those goals? What's your top three goals right now? Hey, look, if you send me your top three goals, I got a new book coming out called Be the Bank. Oh, it's fire. I'll send it to you for free. The first 10 folks, get it to me somehow. Your top three goals, and let's get motivated together. You get the brand new book I got coming out late October, off the chain, early November, called Be the Bank. It's, it's, it's sick, I'm telling you. I put a lot of time and 
Oof, I don't even want to talk about it. Goal setting makes you aware of your weaknesses. Now, again, I don't want to be talking about weaknesses, but it turns your weaknesses into your strengths. It also lowers your level of frustration. And some some homeboy sent me this book that rekindled something. It's like the load the lo, the road less uh, frustrated or the stupid road or something. I can't remember the you know. And it I, I had that book before, and this dude turned me on back onto this book, and it's just like you have to take some time to just really think about things, and and overcome some of your weaknesses or outsource some of your weak weaknesses but if you're vague in your mind and you have doubt but with a structure and direction after you make these goals that structure should be hey every sunday at three o'clock or every sunday 8 a.m or every monday 7 a.m i mean just make it once in your calendar to create your goals to look at them to review i say every day but once a week whatever the case may be get on it when you focus on it You'll be off the chain. You'll replace the vagueness and and the doubt with structure and direction. Can you do that? Thanks for listening to the Savvy Radio Show. Glide online and listen to our other motivating episodes at SavvyRadioShow.com. Connect on Twitter at LandlordBook and always be buying assets. 